Good morning. Uh, this is Dr. Anna, your geology professor from Virginia Western uh, Physical Geology. Today we're going to talk about volcanoes. So first of all, what is a volcano? As you already kind of know it, I don't really have to tell you, but I'm telling you anyways, that volcanoes are mountains, but they are very different from other mountains. They usually are built on their own, you know, their own eruptive product and they are making a mountains a mountain out of it. Um, this could be like lava, volcanic lava, volcanic ash, uh, bombs, uh, tephra, which is airborne ash and, and, and uh, dust. Uh, they are most likely going to be a rounded uh, conical hills or mountain, of course, and it builds, it builds around the vent. Which is uh, along, which is the area along which the magma is coming up, and uh, the term volcano is also refers to the opening or vent through which the molten rock and associated gases are ex expelled. So, basically, the term vo of volcano is also refers to this crater, the the opening at which the lava is going to come out. So, this area is the cone. The magma chamber is down below, and then you got the the vent, and then these are low um, pockets of, of cooling down lava. They are going to be usually subvolcanic uh, because this area is underneath of the earth right here. So this is all underneath, and this is what on top usually. Of course, there are volcanoes which are underwater, but uh, we're going to talk about that too. This slide shows you the distribution of volcanoes of, on Earth. So you kind of can see that there is a whole lot of volcanoes, mostly uh, most of them uh, around the divergent plate boundaries, as we just learned, around the ring of, fire, ring of fire, which is not around the Pacific Ocean. This is all convergent plate boundary volcanoes. Then you got, that's the most common, really, basically. And then, of course, you have like some other oceanic, oceanic plate ones, like just like Japan. And then you have some divergent plate boundary volcanoes, of course. So, as you can see, the, the distribution of the volcanoes are really closely related to the distribution of different plate boundaries. So that's very important to understand. Okay, so as we know, volcanoes are geologic hazards. Uh, one of the first... Um, Reason for that is because of the intense heat which they represent, the suffocating ash and gases. Uh, for example, uh, Mount Pelé, 1902, killed 2,500 uh, people. Then you've got the direct blast of exploding volcano along with uh, hot lava fall, and also the lahars are very important um, and very, very destructive. And we're going to talk about these, so let's go. This slide shows some historic major eruptions, uh, starting down here with the 1792. There was a volcano called Unzen in Japan, which killed 14,500 uh, people. 1815, the Tambora erupted in Indonesia, and it killed 92,000. I mean, this is not a joke, 92,000 people. Of course, it's nothing like the tsunami a couple of years ago, 2004. Remember that? It killed 160,000 people. So that's probably even worse. Then you have the Krakatau in 1833. Uh, it's also in Indonesia, and it killed 36,000 people. 1902, Mount Pelé. In Martinique, killed 28,000 people. Uh, Nevada de Arroyes in Colombia, 1985, killed 23,000 people. And 1991, that's one of the biggest one in our um, uh, era, you know, which is like the last 2,000 years, let's say. The Pinatubo, which would have killed 200,000, but they were evacuated because it happened in 1991. So by, by then, uh, people knew better. And there is a big American base actually in that area. So uh, they helped with the evacuation. Only 300 people died. Those were the people who were not going to move away, which is kind of silly, but that's just the way it goes. 
there is a couple of story here uh, about the most famous one, the Vesuvion, August 24, 1709 AD. That was one of the best known tragic volcanic eruption. You know, people didn't go away, but they just stayed there and, and uh, prayed and uh, tried to give food to the god of the volcano. But of course, it did not happen. Instead of going away, they just stayed there and waited for, almost like I would say, waited for it to come. It's crazy. But anyhow, I just, it, it tells you all the stuff about how my, how big it was and all that good stuff, which I won't ask on the test. It's rather just story. Um, this here shows you the Vesuvius. I actually had the luck to climb Vesuvius. I went up to the top and actually looked down into the crater. It still have a lot of flow of humerolas, which is like post-volcanic gas eruptions and everything was yellow and smelt sulfury and, and rotten egg. So today you can actually walk up to the volcano. You can see that it's very, very alive. So if you think about live volcano is the ones which are erupting at the moment. So I am wrong saying that Vesuvius is alive because it's rather the so-called dormant. Dormant just means that it's a volcano which in the moment is not erupting, but you never know when it's going to erupt. It can happen anytime. And then you got the extinct volcano, which hasn't erupted at all for 100,000 years. So we think that that will not come back. So it's going to be extinct. So remember, we got the the active, the dormant, and the extinct. So anyhow, this is the picture of Pompeii. You know, and Pompeii is the city which completely got destroyed by, by the eruption of the Vesuvius. And this is how you can see Vesuvius from the city. You know, the city was covered by 90 feet of ash. So somehow they were digging for some cellar or something. And that's how they got into this ancient city. It's really, really interesting story. There is a movie about it if you want to see it. Uh, and this here is also showing you the eruption. It's animated, so if you want, when you play the, the slideshow, it's going to show it to you. It was a Plinian eruption, and we're going to talk about that. It, it's the worst kind there is. And the bad news that around Pompeii now, there is a very uh, blooming city called Naples. I, I guess you have heard about it. And since we know that Vesuvius is very, very active it's just dormant right now you never know when it's gonna erupt again and there is like millions of people which should be evacuated if, if something happens and it's just almost completely impossible so the Italian government has this uh, package deal that if you if you uh, move away the government is gonna give you a land somewhere else and give you money to build house on it people just won't leave they love to leave next to the Vesuvius which is crazy it's just like during the 80 time people don't change if they have something they just wanna keep it okay so this is how they found the people basically they suffocated they died and the volcanic ash was really hot so it made, made concrete out of them basically this is how much volcanic ash was on top of them. This one is the Tambora. It erupted in 1815. And uh, uh, this was uh, probably the most, uh, the biggest uh, volcanic eruption in our historic time. It erupted about 150 cubic kilometer of ash. And uh, it is about 150 times more than uh, Mount St. Helen in 1980. Uh, the ash fell as far as 800 miles away from the volcano. Um, so if you go 550 miles away from the eruption center, even that one centimeter of volcanic ash has formed, which is crazy. It's huge. It was huge. And this is just a picture showing the the uh, crater. And uh, it is, uh, Tambora was a so-called stratovolcano. And um, it tells you all the details, which I, of course, will not ask. This is the location of the Tambora. And um, as I said, I will not ask the details, but 
but if you do remember one of them you can use it as an extra credit if you're taking the paper uh, test if you're online test no extra credit this one is the Krakatau which happened in 1883 right here I have the map there actually Tambora is right here and Krakatau is right here. So this I cannot really read it, so I have to look close to the slide to see. So you can see the two is very close to each other. This is a major oceanic oceanic uh, plate boundary. I should have asked instead of telling you. So these islands are all volcanic islands. Um, the Krakatau caused a small catastrophe killing uh, about 36,000 people. The sound of the explosion was so big that people could hear it even in Madagascar, uh, several thousand kilometers away. And um, there was so much volcanic ash in the, in the um, air that actually it cooled the earth main temperature by 2 degrees Celsius in 1880 which is pretty crazy you know what happens when this volcanic ash goes up to the atmosphere it basically shuts the sunlight away so earth is cooling down temporarily until the, the ash is dissipating in the atmosphere and this here shows you the Krakatau right this big one and that's the aerosol cloud from the Krakatau. And this one is the Pinatubo, 1991. This was a big volcano, uh, also one of the bigger one, and it would have killed a lot of people, but by then uh, it was pretty good evacuation planned and, and done. So this just shows the volcanic ash. The volcanic ash moves really, really, this uh, ash clouds move really, really fast. And it's like 900, that we call it the glowing ash cloud. It means it's, it's like a thousand degrees Celsius. So I mean, the chicken cooks at 350, so you can 250. You can imagine that a thousand degrees Celsius is very, very hot. So this car hopefully is going to uh, get out of it because it, it moves really fast. You cannot run it out with a car usually. And the other thing which is very dangerous about volcanoes is the Lahar. The Lahar, you know, usually the volcanoes are very tall mountains and they have usually snow on top of them. And when the volcano erupts, the snow melts and all the rocks on the side of the mountains come down as very, very fast mud flow and it covers everything that's in route. It's going really, really, really fast. Now we're going to talk about the volcanic gases. And uh, from this slide, you really have to know the stuff. Until now, you, I mean, that, that was just story, so... If you know something, it's very good. If you don't know that part, it's not such a big deal. But you do have to know the gases of the volcano. Okay, so here is it. Mostly water vapor. It's 50 to 80 percent. So most of the gas which comes out of the volcano is water. But then you have CO2, carbon dioxide. You have sulfur dioxide, hydrochloric acid, Hydrogen fluoride, which is the strongest acid there is. Hydrogen sulfide, that makes the sulfur smell, the rotten egg smell. Carbon monoxide, which is CO, hydrogen gas. Uh, NH3, ammonia. So most of the time, these gases will not cause uh, problems to humans, but there are cases when they do, actually. So, And if you think, the worst thing is that the straight acids are coming out of the volcano, hydrogen fluoride. And if it's not, then actually when it reacts with the water and the oxygen, it makes acid. So if it's not that much acid coming out, uh, the hydrogen sulfur and all those guys are going to make uh, sulfuric acid, there is hydrochloric acid, fluoric acid. So after the volcano eruption, as long as the, the particles are in the air, 
the rain is always going to be extremely acidic, just like it shows on this, this slide. So this is the so-called aerosol cloud. So this is where the volcano erupts. All these gases are coming out, and whichever is the wind direction, the aerosol is going to distribute in the upper atmosphere. And because it's full of these sulfurates or, or acids, it's going to make the, the acid rain big time. So therefore, all the land around the volcano is going to be covered with acid rain. So the pH of the soil and everything is going to go down, so the plants are all not going to be very happy. So there is a lot of uh, uh, hunger, and people just won't be able to eat because all this food supply is going to be gone. Under volcanic ash, anyway, nothing can grow. There is a very famous uh, volcanic eruption, the Lucky eruption, which caused this kind of problems, a lot of it. Uh, it happened in, 18, in 1783. And it was a fissure volcano. When you have a fissure volcano, that just means that it's a long chain of volcano like this. And uh, the fissure volcano is when the, the lava comes through a, a crack in the earth. So it's like a, it's like a firework. It's really beautiful. Uh, it looks beautiful, but it's very, very destructive. Uh, this, this lucky fissure not only destroyed vital farmland, killing half of the livestock, but also, uh, because of that, it plunged the, the Iceland into a fame, uh, fame, famine, famine. I don't remember how to say it, but you can read it. And it also produced a, a corrosive aerosol around the earth, uh, which, which basically blocked the, the daylight, killed the plants. So there was a lot of famine, famine, I don't know how to say it, around the world world because of, of this volcano and also the the winters uh, the following winters were extremely cold after this volcano this is how the lucky fissure so that's the fissure it's a bunch of smaller volcanoes along this line that's the fissure volcano and this is again just story about um, the but basically after the lucky eruption the conditions were pretty bad like for two years about 75 percent of the livestock and over 9,000 people uh, which is one basically 25 percent of the population in Iceland died uh, because they didn't have food and the aerosols from the lucky have moved uh, throughout the earth in the atmosphere and like in eastern north america the winter of 1783 84 was the longest and the coldest in the american history and it was strictly related to, to this volcano um like such thing happened that uh there was a freezing over the chesapeake bay and it was long there was ice skating in charleston harbor just imagine that it's crazy charleston there was a huge snowstorm in the in new orleans and and the mississippi river as it was entering the ocean froze over and there was even ice flows in the gulf of mexico it, it was absolutely crazy it must have been and i close this section right here and i'll see you in the next one